a first year student at Rutgers University. I am full time. I decided to do it full time because I wanted to really immerse myself in all the growth that happens during an MBA program. So I graduate in 2022. First generation student, my parents migrated here in, from Haiti in the 80s. And so they've always kind of instilled this, this, uh, this idea of education, just instilled it in me that I need to get my education. I need to, you know, that's the only way you're going to succeed in life is you have to learn. And so when, and they always pushed me into healthcare, it's what they knew, you know, and they would never think they always kind of like look frowned upon business because they just didn't know the possibilities that business had, you know, there's so many different areas and functions. And so when um, I graduated, I did my undergrad in health science, I literally handed my degree over to my mom and my dad. And I was like, guys, this is for you. <laughs> I see the MBA is, is it's, that's for me, like that's for me to grow and that's for me to expand and tell my parents, yes, you could graduate with this, but you could also do more in other areas and still be successful. And I'm a testament to that. They watch me all the, they see me all the time. And they're like, so you, you sure you don't wanna go back to healthcare? I was like, no, mom and dad, no. <laughs> I was on the path to be a physician assistant and I was just about to get into PA school and I was like, no, I don't wanna do this. I don't wanna continue my career this way. And you know, settled in on business. So now I'm actually doing something that I'm interested in as opposed to doing something that my parents wanted. When I started the program, a week before, maybe even two days before orientation for our class, uh, we were told that we were going to be fully remote. Prior to that, we were going to be in a hybrid model. So we were going to have the option to, or at least the capability to, you know, be in the classroom and then also work from uh, view classes online. And um, I was excited for that because I knew that, you know, with COVID, we were going to have at least some interaction. At least I could actually meet my, co my, my classmates, my cohort. And then it was a bummer finding out two days before orientation that we were going to be strictly remote. And so when that happened, we went through orientation and I was really trying, and as I said, my biggest goal was to also connect with people and network. And when that didn't happen, I kind of went into overdrive. I was like trying to get, you know, my classmates, my new classmates, people I've never met before, I never, you know, engaged with, try to figure out ways for us to engage. We had planned outings. So I did get a chance to finally meet these people in person. <laughs> but I really wanted to get that in person experience because I feel like that translates on screen. So like once we know, some, you know, once we've met and got rid of the awkward jitters, you know, of meeting someone for the first time. When we're in a classroom setting online, it's a lot smoother, it's less awkward. We kind of already know certain personalities to a little bit, you know. Um, and of course we went through a lot of icebreakers in class. Outside of that, I've attended a number of conferences this year that's allowed me to open up to other people um, and expand my network even further to other people who've done their MBAs. Um, and then also reaching out to faculty as, as I see fit. Um, faculty has been extraordinarily important in this, in this process as well, because they've been able to kind of guide me. Being that we're in a virtual setting, it's a lot easier to connect with people because they don't have to move. They don't have to leave their houses and it's not considered, so it's, it's normal for them now. In the past, you know, working remotely, a lot of these, a lot of people hadn't worked remotely in the past. Now that it's normalized, it's even, even better to connect with people from all over the world. My favorite class, honestly, I have not met my favorite class yet. I think my favorite class, I'm really excited to take organizational behavior <laughs> next semester, um, especially as, we, as I continue to learn more about like, the future of work, employee wellness, um, how organizations are shifting during this time, how are they shifting to being completely virtual, when, and especially in the past when they didn't have those tools, what happened? Um, I recently spoke to somebody at Facebook and they said that when they were transitioning during COVID, they actually had to stop for a month. Facebook kind of paused and was like, we need to get on board and understand how to do this virtual onboarding. How do we, now that we have these people, how do we onboard them and onboard them to ensure that they're receiving the same kind of culture and 
you know, everything that you would normally get in person by like meeting your manager and meeting your teammates. How do we kind of replicate that in the virtual world? So it's been really interesting to see this whole transition. And I cannot wait to take that class because I think I'll have a better understanding of how all of this works. <laughs> Personally, the biggest challenge has been maintaining engagement in three hour long classes. That has been the ultimate challenge for me. Um, being that we are, it was not my vision to take classes online. I, that was not what I wanted to do. I would have taken online class or an online degree if that was the case. Um, so I am definitely the person who was able to interact more in the classroom, I'm better more engaged. I'm better engaged in the classroom. Um, so it's been extremely difficult for me to kind of stay alert after the first hour and a half. Usually after that 10 minute break, I, I, I need to do something else. I'm so happy these, these classes are recorded because <laughs> then I look at them at a later date when I'm able to maintain, like, you know, attain all that knowledge, but it's been difficult to do that. So every morning I wake up to Morning Brew the newsletter, and then also Robin Hood Snacks. I listen to their podcast every day as well to get my financial news on the market, and then also kind of sift through the Wall Street Journal. Um, aside from those habits that I have daily, um, I do try to read a book every month. Um, so the next one I'm reading, which is in the mail, which I'm really excited for, is um, Barack Obama's new memoir, A Promised Land, that just came out on the 17th. I had it pre-ordered, but then Amazon had it like a, a late delivery, so I should be getting it today, but uh, I can't wait to get started on that book. Um, it'll be interesting. I've been waiting for this book for four years now. LinkedIn. LinkedIn, LinkedIn, LinkedIn. LinkedIn is, I, I probably go on that platform at least once a day to check on every, uh, you know, just check on news. It's also a source of where I get my, my businesses as well, because LinkedIn has some great articles. Um, and then you could also connect with me through email, um, which is on my LinkedIn. So it's, it's all connected to LinkedIn. <laughs> Perfect. Awesome. Well, Marsha, thank you so much for us some of your time today appreciate it um, learning more about you mm -hmm.